Hi everyone, it's Sherry. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. Things around me are a little different today and there's a reason for that. Stay tuned. Welcome to my channel and welcome to all of my new subscribers and thank you to everyone who is supporting me in so many positive ways. I don't know this for sure, but I think that you are going to be absolutely pleased that you stopped by today because today I'm going to debut and make my most favorite Dollar Tree hack ever. Now I loved making those placemat totes. At the time I thought they were my favorite, but today's project just bumped that one and I'll show it to you in just a minute but I'm going to explain why I'm sitting in a different location. Today's project, when finished, has a very large footprint. It is 16 by 12 by nine, so it's pretty big. I didn't want to try to squeeze everything in on my normal desk because I wanted the room to spread out. I thought it might be best if we do it face to face with the occasional overhead shot. Y'all, here is what I'm talking about. With the exception of the decorative elements that I've added to this, this is 100% Dollar Tree. Even the wire basket is from the Dollar Tree. Now, for those of you who don't have a Dollar Tree in your area, what I'm about to show you is probably available in some of the stores in your local area. They may not be $1.25, but you still might have access to some of these. So on my workstation, I've added some of the pieces that we're going to need to make this project. What we're going to have here We'll have two tall towers that will hold your eight and a half by 11 inch papers. Here in the back, we have another pocket that is perfect for holding your glue bottles or whatever else you might want to put in it. Then here on the front, you can lift this flap and place items on the inside. If you wanted to place your big old spatula in there, you can, then you close the top. I absolutely love how this turned out. I started to add a drawer and then I thought, no, it'll be easier if we just do it with the flip top. And then Dollar Tree had these wonderful wire baskets. They are so gorgeous. And I thought this would be perfect if you wanted to place some of your embellishments or your small sticker books or your journaling cards. A lot of those will fit in there. This looks complicated, but it's not. And I'm going to show you why it's not. At the Dollar Tree in the office supply section, they have what they're calling corrugated file folders. So it's just cardboard, but it's decorative cardboard. And when you open it, it opens into what some would refer to as a magazine holder. So we're going to use four of these to make our project. That's it. All we need are four. And then because I wanted to really finish off the edges and add my little flip door, I'm using the Dollar Tree black poster board for this. So this really is an easy peasy project. So I'm going to move this so that I can give you an overhead shot of what it is we're going to need to make our project. So to make the project, I have four corrugated file folders. And again, I'm going with that beautiful black and white. And then I'll be using the Jot black poster board. It comes five in a pack from the Dollar Tree. Now this part of the project is truly one of those optional things that I'll be doing. You don't have to do it. Once we actually put this together, if you want, you can call it complete at that point. But for me, I'll be using the poster board as accent pieces. Everything that I'm giving you right now is optional. If you want your finished project to look like the one that I made, then this is what you'll need. If you want to call it complete, once you put those four boxes together, that works as well. So I have some chipboard pieces, two of them. I have one piece that measures eight and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. And I have one piece that measures eight and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. And then I have two pieces of scrap poster board that I'll be using to cover those. And then I have some black strips that I'll be using to go around the edges of my organizer. So I have eight pieces that measure two by three and a quarter. I have four pieces that measure two by 11. And I have four pieces that measure two by nine. I have two pieces that measure five and seven eighths by three and a quarter. And I have one piece that measures 11 by seven and a half. So we're going to go ahead and take all of our pieces that are two inches wide and on the two inch side, 
we're going to score these at one. So we're going to do that on all of our pieces that are two inches wide. And then we'll take the piece that is seven and a half by 11. We're going to score it at one on the seven and a half inch side and we'll score it at four. Then we'll rotate it to the 11 inch side and we're going to score at one, rotate it to the opposite 11 inch side and score at one. So basically what we've done is we're going to go ahead and get all of the scoring out of the way so that we can have that part done. But I had already pre-scored most of my two inch pieces and we scored one each of the three different sizes of two inch pieces. Now I'm going to take all of my poster board pieces and just set them to the side because we don't need them right now. So now what we need to do is I am going to take two of my boxes and I am going to cut them down to size. The way that you're going to know the true size that you're cutting is go ahead and take one piece and fold it in and that's going to give you that fold score. Then you'll match that fold score wherever you want your size to be. So I know that I want one of my boxes to be six inches. So I am just using my trimmer to cut that six inches. And so now I'm going to take my second piece and do the same thing. So I'm just going to open it and fold in one of the bottom pieces to get that fold score. And so when I place it in, this will be the box that's at the back. So I'm cutting it at seven. So I cut one at six and one at seven. So I'm going to use my finger blade just to go in and finish off my cut. And we'll do the same thing with this one. And you're going to have these pieces left. You can actually save them and use them on another project if you want. So now we're going to take these and put them together. And the easiest way that I found to put them together is to fold in this piece, fold in that piece, fold in this piece, and then take these and just tuck them under. And then I'll go on the inside and just pull it nice and tight. I don't think that the way that I just put that together is how the diagram that's on the bottom showed it, but I found that it was the easiest way that worked for me. We'll go ahead and do the same thing with this one. We'll fold in the sides, fold in this piece. I'll tuck that under and tuck that under. And so now we have two boxes. We have one that is an inch larger than the other one, and that's what I want. So I'm going to sit those to the side. And then we have our last two. We do the same thing. We're not cutting these down in size. We simply fold in the side fold in that piece and then we do our tuck-ins of these pieces and there's one fold in that piece tuck in this piece and tuck in this piece and so there we have the four pieces of our project and so before we actually connect all of these together we're going to go ahead and put on the accent pieces. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover one of the tall boxes and one of the small boxes together. So that means that we need two strips that measure 11 by nine. But if you take the two strips and you try to place them like this, you can see that they are too big. So what I'm going to do is take off a little bit here and a little bit here until I have the size that I need. And here's the trick to cutting this. Take your scissors, go up, cutting out, at an angle. So when we cut it at angles like that, we did that so that it would fit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my glue and I'm just using my refill bottle because it happens to be on my desk. And I'm going to take this and put it down. So I'm putting it down just like that. Then I'm going to lay this down, use my big old spatula to get that nice and stuck. And there's one side. And I'll take that second piece that I've already pre-cut and we're going to put it on just like that. 
So I'll add some more glue to this piece. I'm going to take this piece and put it on, just like I did that first one. And then y'all, we just want to make sure that we're getting a nice stick on this. Go in and clean up any of my excess glue. And now I'll take the two pieces that measure two by three and a quarter, and we place those on the front and here at the back. So again, let's just add a little glue. Put that down right there. Do the same thing here on that top piece, just adding some glue. And now I'll take my big old spatula, make sure I have these stuck. And that is how I finished off the top. So even if you wanted to just use this alone as a magazine holder or a paper holder, just adding those pieces to the top elevated an already beautiful covered file holder. So I'm going to move this one. We're going to do the same thing with this one. So I'm going to take my strip that measures nine by 11 don't need to cut it, so I'll just add some glue. We're going to place that down. Use my big old spatula to get that nice and stuck. We do the same thing on the back. So I'm going to take my glue, putting my glue on my paper. Take this, I'm going to put it down like that, and I'll go along the top just to get that nice and smooth. Then I'll take my two pieces that measure three and a quarter by two. I've scored them at one. Now I'll add some glue to this. We'll get this piece stuck. Then I'll take my second piece and we add that here. Use my glue. Place that down. Lay it down. So that is how we cover the big and the little. I'm going to go ahead and do the other two off camera and I'll be right back. All right, y'all, so I have my four pieces and now we're going to put this together. So the way that we're going to put it together is we're going to take the piece that we cut at six inches and the piece that we cut at seven inches and we are going to join them together like this. So I am going to take my glue and I am just going to place some glue along this piece. Then I'm going to use my pouncer just to get that glue nicely covered. I'm going to take this piece and I'm placing it down in an L shape like this. But we need to make sure that we have the bottom nice and flush. So I am just putting that down. I'm just going to press a little bit until I have a nice hold on this. And so now we have this piece. We're going to take one of our tall pieces and we'll join it starting at the back and we're going to use glue just like we did before. So I'm going to place this on the side and this time I'm going to place some glue on these two side pieces here. And I'm being very generous with my glue because I want a nice hold. So that's how I place the glue. I'm going to use my little pouncer just a little bit because I don't want the big globs of glue, but I do want to have 
some really good glue coverage so that when I take this piece, I'm going to place it down and press it against this piece and I'll spin it around to the back so that you can see that I have the back nice and flush and you just need to keep pressing in until you can see that you're getting a good stick so once you have this starting to set we can do the same thing on this side so I'm going to place that down I'm going to add my glue And I'll be pouncing this, so I'm not worried about being too neat, but I do want to get a lot of glue on there. Then I'm going to take my little dauber here and pounce my glue. And now just like with the other one, I'm going to stand it up, push it together. I'll turn it around because I want to make sure I have the back nice and even. So I'll just keep pressing until this actually sets. One thing that I do want to point out is not all of these are going to be cut the same. There might be a little bit of unevenness. That's okay. I am not letting that stress me because I have a beautiful piece already taking shape. So isn't that gorgeous all by itself? We really don't have to do anything else to it unless we want to, and we want to. And so while our beautiful piece is drying, we're going to go ahead and take that 11 by seven and a half inch piece that we scored. So remember we scored on the seven and a half inch side, we scored at one and at four. Then on the 11 inch side, we scored at one, rotated it, scored at one. So we are going to remove our two corner pieces. I'm just going to cut in and remove those. And then we have the score marks here. Let's angle on both sides. Then I'm going to take my piece of chipboard that measures eight and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. And I want to make sure that it will fit inside of my score marks and it will. So I am going to peel away my tape Bring in a piece of scrap poster board and I'm covering this and I'm going to trim away the excess. So now I'll take some tape, we'll place some tape here, down some more tape to make sure I have full coverage and I'm sorry if my lighting goes in and out on my hands I haven't quite mastered the lighting setup out here for filming but I'll get there so all I'm going to do is take this and when I put it down I'm putting it down so that all four edges will fall inside of my score marks. Then I'm going to take just a little bit of glue. I'm going to smush it around with my fingers. Fold that over. Get it stuck. Same thing over here. Fold that over. And the same thing on that front one inch piece. Get that glue covered. We can fold that over. Use my big old spatula to get that nice and stuck. 
And now I'll place just a little bit of glue here and a little bit there. Again, we're going to get that stuck. And y'all, this is the flap door. So I am going to take this little drawer pull. We're going to add some glue to it. And I'm going to go ahead and just set it to the side. So this will have a chance to dry. Spread that glue out. And we're going to place the glue on the part that has the chipboard. Let me see if I can get that nice and straight. And remember, this is optional, so it's what I wanted to do on mine. But seriously, at this point, you can consider this done if you want. So I'm going to set that over there. We're going to go ahead and take this piece that measures 8 and 7 eighths by 5 and 7 eighths. I have a piece of scrap poster board for it as well. And we're using this really as a shelf stabilizer. And I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. I'm going to take this piece and we're going to place it on our scrap poster board. I'm going to trim away that excess. So we're going to take this covered piece and set it to the side. I am going to bring my project piece back in and we're going to take the two pieces that measure five and seven eighths by three and a quarter and we're going to line our sides with it. So I'm going to take some glue, add some glue. And then I'm just going to use my pouncer to spread that glue. And I'll just take this piece, slide it all the way in, place this on the side, and get that stuck. We'll take that second piece, and we're going to do the same thing over here. I'm just going to spread my glue and I'm going to take this piece, slide it in, put it on the side so I can get that stuck, go in with my big old spatula just to make sure. And then I forgot one piece because I want to take that piece and just place it in to line the base. And this piece measures nine by five and seven eighths. I am just going to take a little bit of my glue, put that glue on, and I'll just take this and we're going to put it in and it'll cover the base like that. So I am going to take my big old spatula, go in and get everything nice and stuck. All right, y'all, so we are definitely in the home stretch now. So we need to take the flap and put it on. And it's easy peasy how we do it. We're going to attach glue to this end. When we put it in, we just glue it up to the underside of this. So I am going to take my glue, add some glue right here in the middle. I'm going to take my pouncer and just pounce my glue onto that top flap. Move this. So the easiest way for me is just to take it, bend it, and just get the edges nice and flush. Like this. And then I'm just going to go on the inside with my big old spatula and make sure that I have it nice and stuck. 
And then I just need to let it dry. So while it's drying, I am going to go ahead and put on my decorative elements on the front. So I have enough glue on my pouncer that I am just going to pounce some glue on here. And it's just reptile, so it will hold it. And then I'm going to turn it to me because I need to see where I'm placing this. And it really is a matter of just placing it to your liking. So there's one and that's going to set up pretty quickly. I'm going to go ahead and put the glue on the second one. Turn it around so that I can look at it to get my placement. And even if I get a little glue on the box, the reptile will dry clear, so it won't take away from the look of my project at all. So there are two more things that I need to do. I need to take this piece that measures 8 and 7 eighths by 5 and 7 eighths, and we need to place it inside to brace the shelf. So I'll show you what I'm doing. I am going to take my glue, add some glue to this piece, so that you can see hopefully what I'm about to do. I'm going to lift this up, take this piece, and when I put it in, I'm sliding it to the back and I'm pressing it against this middle shelf. Just making sure I get that glue nice and stuck. And what that's doing for me is giving me a sturdier shelf so that if I set something on it, I don't have to worry about it sagging or bowing. And so the last thing that I want to put in is my little wire basket. Completely optional. You don't have to do any of the additional dressing that I did. I did it because I am planning on giving these to one of my sisters who works from home. And she said she would love to have something like this. So I am going to take my glue. I'm going to put my glue on my paper and pounce my glue all over this base. Like I said, my reptile adhesive definitely will hold. So all I need to do is take this, put it in. So I have placed my glue bottle inside that basket to add some weight because this will set up enough for me to remove that glue bottle in just a few minutes. And so there we have it. We have a second Dollar Tree desktop organizer. Everything but the embellishments on the front came from the Dollar Tree. The process is so simple because we're starting with some pre-made pieces. So I'm going to slide that one over. And I'm going to bring both of these back in so that you can see just how gorgeous these are. And because we made it with Pre-made pieces from the Dollar Tree, very economical, but look at what we end up with. And y'all, I added the embellishments on the front because I thought they were pretty cute. But if we didn't, we're able to make this with all of these Dollar Tree components, make this complete desktop organization system for about $7. $7 for one of these, $14 for the two. And that's including the chipboard scrap that I used as well as the amount of glue that I use. Y'all, this is truly my new favorite Dollar Tree hat. And I hope that you have enjoyed this awesome way that you too can use some of the pre-made items that you might find in the store. It doesn't necessarily have to be the Dollar Tree, that you can use some of those pre-mades and turn it into what you need for it to be. I hope that you have enjoyed this awesome video. If you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, be the reason someone smiles today. Happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.